Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Good Boxing Podcast with your host, Josh Saez. I'm going to jump right into this episode. Everyone remembers when Tyson Fury shocked the world and prognosticated that he would knock out Deontay Wilder within three rounds. Everyone thought he was crazy. They remember the first fight, and quite frankly, I don't think anyone really, really thought what happened that night when Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury stepped in the ring with one another again to happen. What we saw was a thorough domination of Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury dropped him several times and then eventually was beating him so bad that his trainer, Mark Brillen, threw in the towel. Now, finally, after months of wild allegations, after months of cheating allegations, trainer treachery, et cetera, et cetera. You guys already know the story, and I've spoken about this until I'm blue to the face, right? Finally, Deontay Wilder has surfaced. It's not in the form of a wild conspiracy video talking about how his trainer poisoned his water, talking about how he was in, in cahoots with the Kronk gym and, and, and Sugar Hill Stewart trying to take down Deontay Wilder. Finally, it's a picture of him in the gym with a new addition to the team, Malik Scott. There's no surprise that, quite frankly, he would replace Mark Breland, especially after all of the allegations. Now, I don't agree with the replacement. Mark Breland didn't deserve to get treated the way he did. And this is no knock on Mark Breland, and I'm not sitting here to talk about how Mark Breland isn't a good trainer, et cetera, et cetera. Mark Breland is a decorated amateur, arguably one of the best amateurs of all time. And quite frankly, you can sit here and say, you know that he wasn't the issue in the camp. However, after a knockout loss, after a dent on the bronze bomber's name, and after he was thoroughly dominated by Tyson Fury in a second fight, where first fight he outboxed him. They thought, hey, the only way Tyson Fury can win is if he outboxes him perfectly. And then Tyson Fury went out and knocked him out. So the only way you're ever going to get a third fight, the only way you would ever be able to make an argument for a rematch is if you make a drastic change in your style. And I think the change to Malik Scott may pay dividends. Personally, I'm not going to sit here and tell you how I'd feel if Tyson Fury fought Deontay Wilder. They have to fight and see, and I have to see how Tyson Fury looks against Anthony Joshua because that's his next opponent. Now, back to the return of the the bronze bomber. I'm happy to see Deontay Wilder in the gym. After a while, it was just getting sad to see such a prominent champion, someone who talks so much trash, someone who was so dominant for so long, take his first loss and really just seemed to unravel. That's what I saw. I saw a champion that couldn't deal with the fact that someone bested him. He couldn't deal with the fact that, look, all of your errors, all of your flaws, all the chinks in that thick that thick armor you had finally exposed. They, you finally got poked and someone was able to break through that armor and they saw through the flaws and they ended up dropping you, ended up stopping you etc. So I'm so happy to see that he's back in the gym. Only way Deontay Wilder is going to get better is by developing. We know you have that tremendous power. We know you're in a division that's very lucrative. You're still arguably three in the division. Honestly, I would say you're number three in the division. You can't count Dillian White to be above you because he beat Alexander Povetkin after a loss. You can't say Andy Ruiz is number three because he just came off a loss as well to Anthony Joshua. So Deontay Wilder, you're still the third best heavyweight in the world in one of the most competitive divisions where you have the ultimate equalizer, something that no one can teach. You have a devastating right hand. Now, with the addition of Malik Scott, who is a professional boxer, who has a very elusive style, likes to move around, he was slick. And I think... A change in camp can do something for Deontay Wilder's confidence. 
Once you lose confidence in the general, I don't care how decorated they are. I don't care how you feel about Mark Breland. I don't care if he he's got himself, to be honest with you. If you lose faith in whoever's leading your career, it's just not going to bode well for you. And I don't agree with the change because I think Mark Breland's a great guy. I think he's a great for boxing. I think he's a great trainer. And I don't think that was the problem. But I do agree with bringing in someone new. Maybe Malik Scott will get to him given the fact that he's more, I mean, he's literally shared the ring with Malik Scott not too long ago. Deontay Wilder knocked him out. And he just may have a little more respect given the fact that he's been in the ring recently with him. And he's a more active fighter. It's not, uh, Breland wasn't the best pro fighter. He was a great amateur, right? He got Deontay Wilder to the Olympics. He got him far, but maybe he just wasn't getting the message. However, one thing I'm a little concerned about, and I'm not going to lie to you, this is what kind of annoys me about this. If you're going to change camp, get rid of JDs. I'm sorry. I know I'm not trying to be a Deontay Wilder hater. I actually like Deontay Wilder a lot, and I really wish him well in terms of coming back because I do feel like one loss isn't going to end your career. However, when you were winning in the fashion Deontay Wilder was, it's going to be a little harder to come back and still have that same dominance, that same aura of invincibility. People saw that someone finally stood up to you, withstood your power, and made you back up, and he made you will. And once someone sees it, then more people are going to start to believe it. Doesn't mean that it's true and that everyone can do it. You just happen to get backed down by someone that was substantially taller than you and substantially heavier than you. I I still can't believe Tyson Fury did what he did, but it happened and it was Tyson Fury. I don't think every heavyweight can do it. I personally would pick Deontay Wilder over Anthony Joshua based on pre-Tyson Fury um, fight. I got to see Deontay Wilder back in action. And honestly, I would still pick Deontay Wilder over Anthony Joshua right now. I think he wouldn't be able to sustain... He wouldn't be able to withstand Deontay Wilder's power if he touched him. I don't think Anthony Joshua's back foot boxing is that good where he can do it for 12 rounds. I mean, Tyson Fury was struggling to box for 12 rounds unscathed right from Deontay Wilder. So let's not lose sight of that. But what I do want to recognize is I just don't understand what does JD's bring to the table? He wasn't a fighter. His strategies aren't really that great. His pad work is garbage. I mean, when he's doing pad work with Deontay Wilder, I thought they were, honestly, I thought they were messing around. I was going to say the F word, but I thought they were messing around because JD's just has him loading up on right hands, adding more power, adding this. That's not the way you get better. Truthfully, what Deontay Wilder needs to work on is polish up your fundamentals, use that jab, learn how to measure, and not just rely on the right hand. Once you become a one-trick pony, I take away your one trick, you're no longer that good of a boxer. So work on the footwork. Maybe I think that's why he's bringing in Malik Scott. Malik Scott Malik Scott was a very flight-footed, light-footed heavyweight that would move around, and he had good boxing ability. And I think he could really help him develop that left hand because with the educated left hand, your right automatically becomes more educated and makes better guesses when you throw it. I think he could really learn how to develop that hook as well because – If they take away your right hand, the hook can open up avenues for you as well, especially if you do have that natural, natural, hard-hitting power. I mean, my God, the guy hits like a Mack truck, and I know he's skinny for a heavyweight. He's not the most menacing guy, but he's tall. He gets that leverage, and he really knows how to throw his punches. He has God-given power. But power isn't everything. Maybe Malik Scott can help him pick up some defense. Maybe he'll box more on the back foot and not just rely on knocking people out. Because when you fight the better guys, the Anthony Joshua's of the world, the Andy Ruiz's of the world, you're going to need to use your physical attributes where you can be taller, keep them out, and make them run into a hard shot versus chasing, chasing, chasing for only to land the right hand. Luis Ortiz showed a lot, showed some, some weaknesses and some deficiencies in Deontay Wilder in that second fight, but the power negated it. So he can still use his power to negate a lot of the errors he makes, but I want to see him do better. And honestly, 
it's always better when we have more faces in the division because, yes, we're getting the Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury fight, but what happens when they're done? What's next? Right? I personally think Tyson Fury, when he beats Anthony Joshua or if he beats Anthony Joshua, or even if he loses, to be honest with you, to Anthony Joshua, I kind of think this is it for him. I think this is his last ride. He's already been heavyweight champion, undisputed. He rode off into the sunset. And now he's trying to do it again, show that he could do it. And I think potentially this may be it for him. There were rumors in the camp that he's getting tired of boxing. The grind is grueling. And he just kind of came back and was having fun. And then finally now he's doing this whole Anthony Joshua come back for the fights and the belts and then can move on. So after that, I want to see Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. Why not give us that fantasy matchup that we were praying for not too long ago? But Deontay Wilder chose to fight Tyson Fury. And now hindsight 2020, I'm not going to lie to you. It was probably a mistake to give him a chance because you ruined the biggest payday of your life by missing out on that Anthony Joshua fight. I'm aware of all the, the talks and I was on Deontay Wilder's side saying, oh, 40 million guaranteed. And then Joshua gets the lion's share of their pay-per-view, and you don't really know the ins and outs of a deal. But now looking back, it was probably a mistake not to fight Joshua. But he didn't know Tyson Fury was this good. I mean, there were very few boxing people that thought Tyson Fury would beat Deontay Wilder, especially when Deontay Wilder was Deontay Wilder. Even after the first fight, a lot of people didn't expect Fury to win. He wasn't even that heavy of a favorite, let alone to win by knockout. So, Say what you want, but the loss to Deontay Wilder, I mean, the loss to Tyson Fury wasn't even that long ago. But I like what they're doing. I think Showtime PPC is trying to rebuild their man. Personally, if I was Deontay Wilder, you have options, man. You're in the the biggest and most paid division in, in the world. Keep fighting. Come back. Rebuild. Build some momentum. I think you're still in the conversation to be a top five heavyweight no matter what anyone says. Now, if you lose and you look weird or you look like you're not your old self, you look gun shy where you're not looking to trade, then you could start making the argument that your limited boxing ability may become a detriment. But that power you have is just fantastic. And if Malik Scott can teach you how to just be a little more creative with you setting up that power where you're not going to leave yourself over leverage or you don't find yourself really, really unbalanced. I think the sky's the limit for the, for Deontay Wilder. I still think Tyson Fury is a hard fight for him, but I can see him beating Anthony Joshua. I could see him. I could see him beating Andy Ruiz. I could see him beating Dillian White, which is a fight I think needs to happen because Dillian White has been the measuring stick for every one of the heavyweights. Let's be honest. Right, I want to see Dillian White, Tyson Fury. I want to see Dillian White versus everyone because he's already fought Anthony Joshua, beat Pervetkin, been in there with um, Oscar Rivas. There, there's just a bunch of good guys he's been in there with, and he gives us exciting fights. But Deontay Wilder, it's good to see him back. I hope he gets back. I hope he gets a couple of guys to kind of develop. Let the guy develop. I mean, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury are linked up for at least two fights. So it gives him a couple of fights, maybe or two or three, to kind of get back in the conversation, sit down, learn, develop your craft, and get back in the gym. I'm rooting for the Bronze Bomber. I just want to kind of close the chapter on the allegations, let the legal process take place, see what they find. And when the conversation comes about Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder 3, I don't personally don't feel like I need to see it. But if it happens, it happens. I mean, I, a rematch clause is there for a reason. He deserves a rematch. Legally, you got to give the guy a rematch, right? But with COVID, with all the stuff going on, the allegations, it kind of gets hard to defend Deontay Wilder's position. But at the end of the day, he did sign a contract. Both sides agreed to it. Should happen, but I still think the fight will take place. But Tyson Fury needs to not fight him right now. I think Deontay Wilder should Sit back, develop that craft. You're going to still make a bunch of money, personally. He's going to make a lot of money. Beat some guys, maybe fight at Andy Ruiz, knock out, make a statement, knock out Ruiz, or fight someone else that can really, really send shockwaves like, oh, man, Deontay Wilder's back, the bronze bomber. You're going to sell pay-per-views. 
you're gonna sell tickets. And once the world comes back, boxing's gonna be roaring. And I think Deontay Wilder's gonna roar back. I think Malik Malik Scott's a good change. JD's, I don't know. I, I personally just think he should get rid of JD's, but whatever. I mean, Deontay Wilder's career, he has a relationship with him. He feels he's a good fit. It's his It's his life. I mean, it's his career, and I'm not going to sit here and judge someone based on the decisions they want to make. He kept them around for a reason. Maybe he really is close to JD's, or maybe JD's is a scumbag and is just manipulating Wilder and is making him blind to the fact that he really doesn't have a place there, personally. But that's the episode for today. Hope you enjoyed it. What do you think? You think Deontay Wilder could come back? Do you think he's a top five heavyweight? And pretty much, how do you feel about the whole situation? Do you think Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder needs to happen? And would you be interested in an Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder fight? I am, personally. But that's the episode for today. Feel free to follow us on Instagram at Good Boxing Podcast. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button with the notification bell. Thank you so much. Spotify, Apple, follow. Thanks for the support, and I'm really, really grateful. Be well.